Should we throw this game into the time lash? Most people depart with a scream. Dalek Attack is a 1992 game by Admiral Software, aka Alternative. You know, the people from Pontefract who couldn't stick a label on their cassettes without it falling off. They licensed this game back in 1992 from what was BBC Enterprises, while Doctor Who was in the doldrums and, and Alternative were licensing lots of different things from Enterprises, such as a Postman Pat and even a low, a low. Presumably they also had to license the Daleks from Terry Nation because he gets a bit funny. We used to get a bit funny about that stuff and his estate still does. Not a full price game, but not a budget price game either. We're going to start off on the Spectrum. There's versions for the Spectrum C64, Atari ST, Amiga and PC. Spectrum version nearly didn't come out, but your Sinclair readers wrote into Alternative and got them to release it. There's no CPC version, it would have been produced by the guy who did Spectrum and the PC version, but it never came out. Now we're starting off on the Spectrum because level 1 is different. You can only play Sylvester McCoy in this version, for he is the current Doctor in 1992, even though the series hadn't been seen since 1989. And the Daleks have taken over future Earth and you have to travel the globe and stop their evil plans before going to Scarro. Spectrum version is different on level one because you, on the other versions you ride along on a hoverboard type arrangement, but on a Spectrum actually you just run round on a platform type setup like the later levels in the, all the other versions. Over to the C64. Dalek Attack is copyright 1973 and 1992. I think it's the Doctor Who logo that is copyright 1973. And there is a two-player mode on the all the versions of the Spectrum. So you can be the Doctor and Ace, or the Doctor and a unit soldier, who is who looks suspiciously like the Brigadier, but is not, because they would have had to pay someone for that. And you have to rescue the humans who are trapped in the Daleks' disco field. Presumably by the Daleks and not by Ian Levine, and presumably they are not Barkers. There's a big end of level one baddie who you defeat. Over to the Atari ST version, you get this introduction sequence that is kind of like the Sylvester McCoy titles, and you get some Daleks appearing as well with the speech from Genesis of the Daleks. And there's some nice comic strip graphics that set out the story that hark back to the 1960s Dalek comics. And there's the Doctor and Ace, the best Doctor and companion. And there'll be no arguments on that. My channel. You can, on this version, select between Tom Baker, Sylvester McCoy and Patrick Troughton. And, as I mentioned, the companion, if you're playing two-player, can be either Ace or a unit soldier that definitely isn't the Brigadier. Definitely isn't. Definitely, definitely isn't, for licensing purposes, the Brigadier. So you are now listening to this disco music as you go along on your offer pad. And it's excruciating. Oh... You can't avoid hitting things. The Daleks have trapped the humans in these kind of, um, protuberance things. <laughs> Dear me. Over to the PC. This is a DX4 100 running this. A very decent computer for 1992-93 when you've been buying this game. And this game was re-released several times on the PC by Alternative. I'm unable on this version to find out how I select a different Doctor, but I can select a different Companion. Because it says left and right selects characters, but I can only change the Companion. No sound, because I've only got PC Beeper on this, but interesting to see how this goes. And it goes badly! It goes very badly. It's unplayable. I'm told... 
Oh, yeah, if you go too slow on the sewer level, Daleks come up behind you and shoot you up the backside. I'm told by people who know about such coding issues that the PC version is probably writing to the hardware a little bit too directly. So if you put it onto a PC that's just a little bit faster than would have been standard on the day, it runs like that. Certainly my Dell box here it renders this game unplayable, even though a DX4 machine would have been perfectly reasonable spec just a year after this game was released, when you consider it was released at the end of 92 and the Spectrum version came out in 1993. DX4s common by 94, new people with them. So yeah, alternative coding mess up. Won't be able to show you any more of the PC version because on the system I've got here, this 486, it's unplayable and it's too slow on the old Amstrad. Catch 22. Over to the Amiga. And it's interesting they are using the 1973 logo. It's the one they used on the VHS range, I suppose. I must confess, I am a barker at this stage. And you get the speech with audio from Genesis of the Daleks. This is only the beginning. We will prepare. We will grow stronger. When the time is right, we will emerge and take our rightful place as the supreme power of the universe! Which of course do sound a bit like Zippy for obvious reasons. So again, you got a Kef McCulloch style <laughs> Doctor Who theme going on in the background. And they've the game's from Admiral, but they've got alternative software on this screen. It's just confusing. Why not say it's from alternative to begin with? It was this weird price point they put it out at. This is just it's it's like Kef's got a Casio keyboard and his play he's just noodling a doctor who theme with his drum machine right okay into the amiga version we go so we can select our doctor and our companion again. Let's select Tom Baker. So our Tom Baker goes into the TARDIS with a curiously high pitched TARDIS dematerialization sound. Right, it, it's just that you know a game is going to be really bad when it starts with a sewer level. Oh, oh, oh. I'm glad they're saying exterminate because I thought it could be going a bit Victor Louis Smith there. So, of course, we're doing the sewers, and on the bottom of the screen there, you can see a fetid pool of sewage. Strange that. I didn't just notice that. I've been playing this game for quite a while, and you know, among a fetid pool of sewage, uh, you're not really going to notice it within the game, are you? And yes, the game's crashed. And apparently, um, this version's bug fixed, but the original game likes doing it a lot more. So I've restarted and I'm now Sylvester McCoy because it's taken three attempts and it crashed both times to Tom Baker. So it seems happier with Sylvester. So let's stay with that. We're on the London level and, uh, Notice Doctor Who can now climb around like a chimpanzee. You know that really excruciating bit at the end of part one of Dragonfire, where he's hanging in the air for no reason at all, and it doesn't even turn out he's actually hanging in the air. It's like that. This entire game could be summed up as the end of part one of Dragonfire. You can have music on the Amiga version during the game. I've turned it off because it's too annoying. 
Back on the ST and we're back with our disco theme, Pinky Plonk. Explore the rooms and we're going to find the Barkers. There's two of them. We've shot that man in the crotch. He's a robo thing from the original uh, second Dalek story and the movies. One Barker. Over to the C64. The music's better on the 64. It doesn't work, but it's better and the Barkers are all wearing purple trousers. And the baddies just hang around outside the door, so if they were shooting you before you went in, they'll still be there afterwards. And watch the Daleks when you see them, because they're two-dimensional. They're paper thin. When they rotate, there's no uh, depth to them. They just flip. Back to the Spectrum, where, well, we could say it's incredibly lazy they haven't put a soundtrack on here, but given the stand of the music on the other versions, we can consider it a blessing. I, uh, th th there's something to be said by the way this specky version zips around the graphics are well defined. It's very um, hit and miss with the sound. There's so no sound at the moment, but suddenly there's sound when I hit something there. It's weird. It's weird there's no 1 to 8K music. I just don't think alternatively bothered. I think they did the minimum effort to get this out so we're going to find all this game is like a really annoying maze and we're going to find all of the people to rescue and then find some kind of card to fight the end of level baddie so i've now found all the people on the amiga version i now need to do something with a smart card but i'm not sure what and i've looked all over and i'm not sure and the doctor i it's just ludicrously can hang around it's such a lazy game doctor who could open up so many possibilities to you and it's just rubbish sometimes items are hidden so you can inspect them if you bend down for a while there you go i've got some grenades because because the other thing is right doctor who is really famous for using his laser gun and grenades a sylvester mccoy is quite cross about this game actually because of the use of weapons because he always made a point that his doctor talked his way out of situations and didn't use weapons, didn't point a gun. And here we have Doctor Who with his famous laser gun shooting from his sonic screwdriver. Oh, it's excruciating. Right, so I found somehow the smart card. I don't know how. And here we go. This is the end of level one, Barry. And here it is. It's a big Dalek. It's quite impressive. And we have to shoot its grubby little protuberances in order to defeat it by by throwing grenades at it. Just like the end of Remembrance of the Daleks where the Doctor does that. Oh no, wait a minute, it talks a Dalek to death. Just... Sorry. This is just infuriating. By the way, um, there's a, a sign on the C64 version that says, Bite me fanboy which indicates either the programmers didn't care or they just knew how bad the game was. Here, the Time Lords are here. They paid for... Because when you use characters, right, you need to pay the rights to use them. And there's nothing in this game mentioning rights for the Daleks or the Time Lords come to that who suddenly appear. Technically speaking, I think I'm right in saying if you use the Time Lords, you have to play Robert Holmes. I don't know. I... It's rubbish. It's just excruciatingly crap. We've defeated the everyone bad. Oh, just... Ugh. I do like these cartoon graphics. Pod deactivated. Massively scrolled up Doctor Who logo that looks like it's on a Commodore 64. But we're on the Amiga! And a font so ugly, again, it looks like an 8-bit font. Message from the Time Lords. Well done, Doctor. London no longer has Dalek. The Time Lords wouldn't care! They're not interventionist. Who 
writes this rubbish? Loading Paris, level three on the Amiga. Shoot the robo man. Oh look, there's Marcel Wave behind me. Can I shoot him? I've always wanted to shoot a mime artist. In a computer game, not in real life, by the way. Come on, Marcel. Why can't I shoot the mime artist? Euro Disney, 200 years old. Well, Euro Disney would have been brand new in 92, so they're making a funny joke there. I went to Euro Disney in 1993. It was awful. Sorry, I'm finding anything I can possibly do to talk about anything other than this game. Paris on the C64. Look, there's a Barker. Right, we're leaping around platforms that aren't very well. Oh, I've got in somewhere. We're going down a tower. It's so muddled. 2D Daleks. It's just such a lazy game design. It could be so good. And it's nearly impossible to avoid taking damage. But luckily Doctor Who's got now got lots and lots of grenades. Tokyo level, level four. Four on the spectrum. Again, nicely defined graphics. You wonder what it would have been like on the CPC. Would they have just... La it's alternative. Of course they would have lazily poured in the spectrum version. It would be like this, but slower, wouldn't it? There's a little man extra life down there. Ah, fallen. Ugh. Tokyo on the C64. There's a Barker there. Oh, I'm... Um, oh, <laughs> well, um, uh, yes. I'm not going to comment what that looked like I was doing. Uh, I quite like... The, I'm going to find some positives. I quite like the graphics on the C64. I just find this game reprehensibly and insultingly awful. But it's not bad in the way some games are bad. It's bad because you've taken a, a good license and just defiled it. What's that thing floating around there? No, not the mind probe. I don't think you'd get away with this day because there were some really terrible Doctor Who games. There was uh, Destiny of the Doctors. The only saving grace of that on the PC was Anthony Ainley doing his last appearance as the Master. And you can find all those clips, so I think on YouTube, one of the Doctor Who DVDs. But it that game was so insultingly awful, and it ran so badly, even on a high-spec PC of the time. Some people today say, Destiny of the Doctors was okay, you know, and they're, they're playing it on PCs that were impossible to have the kind of spec back when, I think it was, I had a Pentium 150, and it ran like a dog. Anyway, I'm finding anything I can to talk about other than this rubbish game. This is the end of the game on the spectrum. And Dan Forrest is just hovering around in its circle. If you stand where I'm standing, he doesn't shoot at you. You can just lay lots of lasers into him. And then you can just defeat him with your laser gun. It's lame. Logic, my dear Zoe, merely allows one to be wrong, with authority. Well, some people may say I'm wrong about this game, but we've looked at Dalek Attack on the Spectrum, C64, Amiga, ST and PC. Is this game a Caves of Androzani, or should we throw it into the Time Lash? Well, it's rubbish, isn't it, really? It's a lazy, nasty port from Alternative. It isn't up there with the crimes of Count Duckula 2, but... It's horrible, and that's reflected in reviews at the time. Your Sinclair were more generous, mainly because I think they'd helped get the game released. But even on the spectrum, where games by this point were very thin on the ground, this is poor. 
The 16-bit versions, well, forget it if you haven't got PC to the exact specification the coder used, because it's not going to work. Amiga version has some fairly nice sampled speed. Sometimes it plays back at the wrong sample rate, and the game will crash a lot. Get a bug fix version if you insist on playing this game, and be prepared for it to crash anyway, as you saw. ST version is much the same, but with worse audio and no sampled speech. C64 looks attractive, but it's still an awful wandering around randomly finding things game where you get lost over and over again. It does have fairly decent music though, atmospheric even if it doesn't really suit Doctor Who or have any Doctor Who theme in it. As a Doctor Who fan, I know you can get joy in even the worst of things. The Horns of Nymon, for example, has Graham Crowden, and it has Lala Ward doing a superb performance, a superb Doctorish performance as Romana. But this has no saving graces at all. It's a cynical attempt by a software company that had learnt it could cheaply license BBC properties and then churn out games for maximum sales. Shame on you, Alternative. You really were one of the most grubby 8 and 16-bit software houses out there. Yet again, you've turned out something smelly, unpleasant, awful, and that's best consigned to the appalling sewer level at the start of this game.